you remember being a kid and playing on a jungle gym like this? What if a vandal vandalized that jungle gym and closed it down? As a community member, would you feel powerless about this action? If you had tools to be a part of the solution, would you use them? Aloha mai kako. My name is Forrest Frizzell, and I'm here today to talk about open government and citizen engagement. My movement is about creating tools that are easy to use, easy to find, tools that connect citizens to their government and to their communities. But before I begin, I'd like to paint a picture of where we are today on a national level. Since 2010, 27 municipal entities have filed for bankruptcy, seven of them city governments. In the next five years, 60% of city and state workers will be at or above retirement age. But most importantly, our current way of problem solving is not working. One thing you find out very quickly when working in government is people tend to solve problems based on tradition, not law, not policy, certainly not efficiency. If you want to make enemies, try and change decade-old problem-solving in government. <laughs> Trust me, I know. <laughs> and in 2008, we experienced a very real financial crisis. We've experienced a near collapse of our banking system and an overall distrust with government. And nowhere is it more evident than in voter turnout. Since the 1960s, worldwide voter turnout has been on a decline. In the United States, we rank 138 out of 172 voting nations. And in Hawaii, we have some of the worst in the nation. We hover around 40%. That means 60% of the people don't care what government does. They're so disenfranchised that they feel that their voice or their vote doesn't matter. But as leaders, there's no better time than now to affect improvements. We hear the word changed used so often, but I don't really like that word. You can change anything. It doesn't mean you've improved it. So starting in March of 2011, we compiled a series of public events. And with the backing of a forward-thinking mayor, a partnership with an incredible organization called Code for America, and a group of small but very committed community volunteers, we went through the process of creating change agents. And our goal was to create these change agents who wanted to disrupt government, but disrupt government in a positive way. And we did this largely using tools that already existed, mobile applications, web technologies, Twitter, Facebook. Our goal was, could we agitate people enough could we get them excited enough and give them the tools to want to be a, a part of this movement? And so we started with a portal called Can Do Honolulu. And this was an acronym for Citizens Accessing Numbers Drive Opportunities. And we posted all of our fiscal year budget on here, both proposed and actual, things like month-end close on a quarterly basis, and we posted all financial disclosure statements of appointed officials. And this was our way of saying, we're here to do something different. We want to expose government in a way that's never been done before. And we followed that up with an event in January of last year called City Camp. And we had over 150 people that came down on a Saturday. And the topic ideas were all generated and voted for online. And we talked about a number of things that day, open government, transparency. And one of the big topics we talked about was transportation. Now, we hear about the bus a lot these days. And imagine if our transportation system looked like this. <laughs> so we had all this really great information and this great dialogue. So we decided that we were going to host a hackathon. And for those of you who don't know, a hackathon is basically a competition between designers, developers, and entrepreneurs. And they basically compete to create mobile and web apps and tools. And the winner of this competition was a group named Team AJ. And Team AJ actually attended City Camp. And at City Camp, we talked about how all of our buses have GPS on them. And so they created this really cool app called The Bus. And this app lets you know, based on where you're standing, all the bus stops around you. And you get to drill down on these bus stops, and it shows you bus arrival times. And it's pretty accurate within about two minutes. 
How many people remember the Japan tsunami? How could you forget, right? Like, we almost got wiped out. And the first thing everybody did was run to the store and buy toilet paper. But the second thing everybody did was worry if they or their loved ones were in an inundation zone. And historically, everyone would just look in the phone book for this information. But we don't have phone books anymore because most people have cell phones. So the public hit our website by the thousands. It was like a denial of service attack, and our website crashed. And after the dust settled, one of、uh, our employees he knew that we had a GIS map with all this inundation zone information. So he created this app called Honolulu Flood Zones. And this app lets you know real time if you're standing in an inundation zone. And there's this really great feature that he built in that lets you type in an address and search for that address because, you know, if your tutu is like mine, she probably doesn't have a smartphone. Now, this employee, he attended city camp as well, and this really represented a cultural shift in our department. And this showed that people were starting to think about how can we use government data to better the lives of our citizens. Next, we launched an app called Honolulu 311. Now, this app lets you take a picture of things like a broken streetlight, abandoned vehicle, or an illegal dump site in your neighborhood. And this is really easy, and it, it gives people. Tools right at their fingertips to help make their community a little bit better. And for us at the city, what it does is geocodes that, that location, and we get the picture, and we're able to more easily send out our crews to repair or fix or remove whatever obstacle is there that's cluttering your neighborhood. And then in June of this year, Mayor Carlisle issued a memo to all of us cabinet members, and he said he wanted. More data to be made available in an open and common format, data that normally wasn't, pre- wasn't previously released to the public. And so, with the boss backing us up, we, we launched this next iteration of our open government platform, and we called it data.honolulu.gov. And now, this website is pretty great, and it, it takes all of these data sets and all these GIS maps that we have, and it wraps a common It puts it in a common format that designers and developers can work off of. And they can create apps or web portals or tools that they find useful. And we've had a couple of people do some really neat things. One gentleman, he created a budget visualization of our city budget. And most people, they can't read a complex budget, but this visualization made it really easy to see how public dollars are being spent. And another gentleman had this great story where he likes to recycle. But like most people, when his recycling is, is ready to go, he'll load his car up and he'll forget what High Five Center is open on the day that he's able to take his recycle centers in. So he used the data that we provided and he created this really cool mobile app that lets you know the, the High Five locations based on where your geolocation is. And this is a visualization of what that city budget looks like. <laughs> Complex, right? Now, my favorite app that we did is Adopt a Siren. This lets you adopt the tsunami siren in your neighborhood or your place of business. And we had some fun with this. We gamified it. So the first person who, name, get, who adopts the siren gets to name it. But now people have a direct connection to one of the first lines of defense on our island. We, and this was also a neat story in that we reused code from a previous Code for American engagement. So now we're connected with a couple other cities who have done a similar platform with this.、Um, now, just last month, one of, the, one of the folks who had adopted this siren, and he named his siren Henrietta, he tweeted us and he said, Hey, I checked on my siren. It's loud and clear, dot, 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 very loud. And, You seem like a nice bunch. I won't play the video for you because it is extremely loud. <laughs> But think about that. How much more connected to his community is this citizen? And finally, our flagship project with Code for America. This was a project called Honolulu Answers. And in all of our public outreach, what we heard time and time again was that our website was very difficult to navigate. I use the word difficult gingerly. It was often much more colorful language, and Ted won't let me use it. <laughs> But the problem is, most government websites are built by agency. And citizens, they don't think in terms of agencies, they think in terms of services. So we built Honolulu Answers to be navigated and searched the way that you would talk to a friend, a neighbor, a family member. Things like, how do I renew my driver's license? Or, what happens if my rubbish bin is broken? 
And we did a bunch of research on what people were searching for on our website, and we came up with over 100 questions and answers, and we held an event that we called a write-a-thon. And as far as we know, this was the first write-a-thon ever in history. And we had over 50 people that came down, again on a Saturday, and they helped us write these questions and answers for this website. And it was an amazing day. There were folks from the city there, folks from the community, and we broke down a lot of barriers on that day. Now, a friend of mine, Jen Polka, she's the founder of Code for America, and in her recent TED Talk, she had this to say, we aren't going to fix government until we fix citizenship. And a neighbor is a far better and cheaper solution to government services. And in my two years of government and my years working in the community, these thoughts really resonate with me, especially when I see pictures such as these. In the last year, I've seen over a half dozen news reports talking about, among other things, the destruction of our public bathrooms. And in every news report, the blame was placed squarely on government not being able to keep these bathrooms open. But not one report had the courage to say, at what point in our society did this become OK? This didn't happen 40 years ago. I think our kupuna are very com confused when they see this. But I think that the Adopt a Siren platform is something that can help us with this. I think it's time for us to take back our public places. And if you think back to the gentleman who adopted the siren, adopting a siren, that's pretty easy. But now, that gentleman is on a path to taking a more difficult step of t playing a bigger role in his community. Now, I've given you a, a lot of examples of things that we worked on, and I, I just really wanted to show what can happen when citizens and government work together. And I believe really strongly that a smarter, more connected citizen results in a smarter government. Trust is built, innovation happens, and a process unfolds. But for me, this has nothing to do with the apps that we created. It has nothing to do with the data that we released. For me, this all has to do with the process of improvement. Mahalo.